You know, in this day of data-centric operations, computing with vast power and the ability to simulate almost anything, there may still be a place for engineering fundamentals. I'm with Chandrakant Patel. He's HP's chief engineer and senior fellow. 151 patents, over 150 papers, and a member of the Silicon Valley Engineering Hall of Fame. Chandrakant, I understand that you still advocate that the fundamentals of engineering, the basics, the physics behind what we do, is still an essential part of this process. Not only is it an, is it an essential part of the process, Today, as even the cyber age or the data centric age, uh, it is central part of the, the process because we need to devise energy efficient data centers. So that's where fundamentals come in. But not only is it true today, but indeed going into the future, fundamentals will be central to our success. So we will see a tremendous ramp up in the need to understand the fundamentals. And, and, and I base my assertion based on what I see have been the technology trends. So if you look at the, the trends, which we elucidate on this board here, the 19th century was about the machine age. It was about the fundamentals. The 20th century was about the cyber age. The latter part of the 20th century, the cyber age or the information age, was built on data centers. The data centers were built on fundamentals. Once they were built, we somehow got into this thing of Oh, the data is available. I don't need to know the first principle. I don't need to know the second law of thermodynamics. It's all there. That is un unfortunate because if you look at the 21st century, it's the integration of cyber and physical. It's the machine age together with the digital age. And the cyber physical age necessitates the depth in fundamentals. So. Now, those of us who are the, uh, come from a mechanical background and right. iterative design background, of course, we hear this often from what I call the young people, the data center, right. <laughs> who say, we can simulate everything at this point. I don't care where we start. We will guess and we will iterate at lightning speed and we will get to the correct answer. So, yeah. this. so what's your opinion of that philosophy? Oh, actually, that, I'm, I'm very glad you asked that question because I, as we were building our own capabilities, a lot of people put the same thing to me, saying, oh, we just hired a bunch of data scientists. The mechanical system's a black box. They'll figure it out. Unfortunately, the black box we have is not that simple. You must have domain knowledge. And in fact, I wrote an article recently uh, in LinkedIn and as a blog, which I call machine, Requi machine Learning Requires Domain Knowledge. And that shows that if you just took data and tried to figure out what is happening, you could see some phenomena occurring and you could try to correlate it. If you don't have domain knowledge, you might say, this happened because the following thing. You have a hypothesis, you prove or disprove it. You can't get to causation. So in my article, I wrote, write about failures of disk drives in a data center. Data was collected and people said, there's a cluster of failures here, cluster of failures here. It may be due to, it may be due to temperature, it may be due to da da da. It's all guesswork. But when I looked at the problem, I calculated the fundamental frequency of the arm. And then I looked at the rotation of the blades. Four blades, 15,000 RPM, 250 hertz, times four, 1,000 hertz, arm frequency is 1,000 hertz. So from dynamics of structures, I deduced that the fan rotational speed is causing the arm to vibrate, which does not cause a failure, but has throughput problems. People take drives out, send it back to the supplier, no error found, it comes back. Warranty cost, energy cost, all because we did not look at the, the what was happening from a fundamentals point of view. That is a classic example where, well, like I share here, machine learning comes together with domain knowledge. And that's a simple example. A simple resonance issue, just, exactly. uh, just, just like a, a box girder bridge. Exactly, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge is yes. an example, right? Think about it, 1980, I worked for a company called Memorex. There was a commercial that said, that was on TV. Ella, Ella Fitzgerald would sing. Yes, the, wine the glass, glass would shatter. The yes. glass yeah, would shatter. Yeah, yeah. And it would be recorded on Memorex tapes. Yes. And every time, yes. The first lady of songs yeah. song was played back, it, the glass would shatter. Yes. It was a prime time commercial. People knew what was resonance. That was, you might say, an age of fundamentals. Mm. Today we are in the same thing. We are building large systemic uh, systems like the data center where these phenomena are occurring. If we are just going to guess at the phenomena, we will be inefficient. So even in the simple case, I need to get codified domain knowledge. So after I wrote that article, one of the professors from Virginia Tech said, Chandrakant, you're absolutely right. In AI, people used to call it codifying domain theories. In other words, what you do is the people who know the fundamentals, they codify it. Maybe it goes on engineering.com, where you codify a whole section so that people who don't have the fundamental knowledge can go to those rules 
maybe that's how you can help a lot of people so that's for some set of problems but then when you look at complex problems such as 3d printing then you got thousands of nozzles jetting ink or the ink heat absorbing ink you got heat transfer phenomena this is very complex there you need you know you need people who have say a masters in mechanical engineering and a phd in computer science so you need depth in almost two fields to work so there is various levels where we will have a combination of fundamentals and data science come together so it is definitely the age of fundamentals that's how i trained all three of my kids who are also engineers they have to start from a fundamentals perspective Chandrakant Patel says fundamentals still essential even in the 21st century for successful engineering product design. <laughs>